Bibles. Philippians chapter 1, verse 10. Um, I may have to go pretty quick on this class because we've got several different people that come here and, you know, we may need to try to get out on time, so that may cut some of our classes short. Verse 10, notice it's a semicolon after the last verse, so... Uh, there's, there's an ongoing reality that's taking place here. <clears throat> so let's just read verse 10. That you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. And let's go ahead and read verse 11 in faith. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory of God and praise of God. <clears throat> so, the again, we found in, in verse 9 that he brought up the subject of love, but it wasn't out of the blue. It wasn't just some Christian theme that he decided to bring up. It's, it was a literal um, uh, reference to Paul's self-giving in Philippi when he went to jail, when he went into suffering, for that church and to and and believed in life out of death and therefore he embraced the um, accusations he embraced those things because he believed that they they would lead literally to something greater if he had the right spirit which was the spirit of christ <clears throat> and so likewise in verse 10 um, that you may approve things that are excellent, that's not just some sort of a random statement either. That is totally along the line of everything that he's been saying up to this point. What has he been saying? Well, um, in, in verse 1, he gave us the whole book in nutshell form. Verse 2 through 6, <clears throat> he was showing shall I say, important ways of relating to the Lord through prayer, through thanksgiving, through him giving us peace and all these this sort of things. But now he's making a reference to things that are excellent, things that are uh, not just important or godly. Um, I, you know... I don't want to just pass it over. I want us to realize that for, for Paul, these things that he's talking about are not just his theology. Everything that he's mentioned up to this point that pertained to him was literal confrontation with trials and, and decision making on his part whether he was going to go with what he felt was more excellent or go with a simple or, or basic Christian you know, concepts or go with his own flesh and react and run. <clears throat> Paul looked at these circumstances and, and the way to, to traverse through them as the more excellent way. And he did. He did. He clearly did. And for him to bring up the things that are more excellent, again... Or is not some random concept or for us to, to, as we read it, think of the things that we think would be more excellent and then to focus on that. No, it's the specifics of what he has already confirmed to us 
what he feels is more excellent. And, and it's not even what Paul feels, although clearly Paul held it, uh, this way of approach as more excellent. But as described over, in, and we can turn there. We don't want to spend a lot of time there, but keep your place in Philippians. But over in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, to grasp that for Paul, this, this thing that is more excellent, he's going, to, he's going to spell it out in this chapter too. He's going to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, we have to go back to uh, 12, the last verse in chapter 12. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. All right. Now, you know he's going to be speaking of love. You do know he's going to be speaking of self-giving. Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. All right. What is he referring to? He has spent much of the 12th chapter, and particularly the last half, he spent um, talking about gifts of the Spirit um, and how there are different offices and different gifts and different uh, uh, administrations and this sort of thing. And when you go to the average Christian church, uh, especially spirit-filled churches, they will put a lot of emphasis on the gifts of the Spirit. Okay? Now, let me make, make it absolutely clear. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I have no problem with the gifts of the Spirit. I'm not Baptist. <laughs> I, you know, I, they're in the Word of God. If it's in the Word of God, I want to believe it, okay? Paul has spent this last chapter talking about their importance. <clears throat> he put it in the Bible. But let us notice, as he leaves the subject, he builds a bridge to what is important to what is more excellent but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. He is not going to contrast 1 Corinthians 13 with um, sin in the church or failure. He's not going to... Thank you. I actually need... I don't know what my problem is here, but... Something has come upon me. Um, he, it's almost like, okay, I'm tired of talking about these temporal gifts that function in the church. And he, and he ends chapter 13, uh, the last couple of verses. Uh, now we see in a mirror darkly, but then face to face I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And now abide it faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. All right. He is contrasting uh, being able to suffer long with being able to function by the Spirit, in a, by a gift in the church. Or he is contrasting um, uh, not vaunting yourself, not being puffed up with um, uh, and, and calling that love. And it's, and it's interesting because if you study this chapter, and it's not my intention to teach it right now, but if you study this chapter, he's giving you the coin. He's not only telling you what you should do, but what you won't do. He's not only showing the positive side, the heads, he's showing the tails. And uh, doth not behave itself unseeth, seeketh not its own. Is not e easily provoked. Okay, doesn't mean you can't get provoked. At least it's not at the drop of a hat. 
Amen? amen. This side of the room, amen? amen. This side over here? Amen. Back up over here? <laughs> what? Yes. Well, we know where the real problems are coming from. <laughs> All right, so he's contrasting um, this stuff with knowledge and with power and with uh, prophecy, knowing all mysteries. He's even contrast, and he's saying, look, this is the excellent way. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Folks, he's saying this is the excellent way. This is it. But it's not, please don't read this, that it's talking about what I call sloppy agape. It's not talking about just running around hugging everybody and, and feeling, you know, so close and warm and everything. And, you know, you can take ecstasy and feel that. <laughs> well, you can. Yeah, it, it makes you feel more <sighs> apart. Um, not that I would know. Um, but he's saying... If you have the gift of prophecy, if you understand all mysteries, my God, who among us knows all mysteries? You know? Well, I know one man, but other than... <laughs> there is something more important. There is. There's something way more important. And if you had power and you could move mountains, and do you think he's joking here? I mean, if you saw somebody with the power to move mountains, you'd go, oh my God, they must really be of God. Oh my Lord, oh, 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 oh my mama. He says, it's nothing. He says, he doesn't say it's nothing. He says, I am nothing if you have not love. And I like this one. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profit me nothing. What, what did he just say by that? He said that love is not doing these things. Love is the heart, the tender heart of Christ, the way of Christ. Again, he hasn't, he hasn't gone there yet. We get, we're going to the second chapter where he's going to give us such a dissection of this reality that it'll blow your mind. But here he's just making a reference in Philippians. He's just making a reference to that more excellent way. And he, you can see that he's totally on the same subject here, isn't he? As, as he was in Philippians. He's totally on the same subject. And that means that um, someone could sit out in the middle of the street, dump gasoline on them, set themselves on fire, and do it for everybody else's good. And if it's not God, if it's not Christ, if it's not um, agape, if it's not... Uh, if it's not from the source which is called Jesus in us, if it is from the source of the message of Jesus, it still doesn't count. Yes. And that's, that's a good point, because remember that Paul, when he, when he started this thing, he started demonstrating this new relationship as 
self-giving for others. But then he described it as love. And then he started talking about what's more excellent. Bingo, that's how we got here. That's how we got here. We're not skipping around. We're actually following the trail. <laughs> following what trail? The trail Paul followed to get to Jesus. You know. And so um, he, he, says, he says, look, you're not going to know all mysteries because we know in part. You're not going to be able to prophesy every deep thing or every, you know, whatever, however you, you, you call prophecy in your particular bent. <clears throat> uh, um, that it's going to fail. Um, they shall be done away, he says. Okay. Okay. Then he's saying miracles are wonderful, but they're going to be done away. He's saying prophecy is great, but it's going to be done away. But wait a minute. He's not just talking in general that it's going to be done away someday. He's talking about the coming of what's not in part. Do you understand? He's talking about the, the more excellent thing Sh you know, overshadowing, but also shining through. You, you understand? In other words, um, in, in, you know, increase more in love more and more, uh, or let love increase more and more in your knowledge, in your discernment, in your judgment. Let this spirit guide all things that you have from God. Yes. Is that what it's saying or am I just twisting the scriptures here? I mean, if that's what it's saying, then we have to realize, uh, for we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part is done away, okay? What is that which is perfect? Folks, it's what he's been talking about in the verses above. Love doesn't do this. Love does do this. Love doesn't do this. Love does do this. And then he says um, that w there's something coming in the church. See, we're wanting the Lord to come for the church. <laughs> but Paul's wanting something to come in the church, and it's Jesus that's the reality of it. This, this love, this, this life, this selfless, this manifestation of the selfless one. Where? In the church. I, I probably refer to the to this again later, uh, but we we call ourselves the body of Christ, which is just terminology and just a term. Unless we strive to be the embodiment of Christ, if we're not the embodiment of Christ, then why are we even talking about being the body of Christ? It's just a title tacked on something. Yes. First Corinthians 14, it says, follow after charity, but the translation is make love your great quest. Is that how it's translated? On the back. What, what translation? But it's, uh, Royal Berkeley version. You know the little Gideon's Bible you get? Modern English. Make love your great quest. All right. Now, see, I, I, I walk a tightrope here because without, you know, you, you remember Jesus rose from the dead and he said, look, look at my hands. all But you also remember at a certain point he breathed on them. You know, it's like, 
Okay, I'm showing, I'm talking, da 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 da. Okay, here. Let what's in me come in you. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let the breath of life come in you, dead people. <laughs> no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to, about Jesus and the disciples. <laughs> and a few over here and one over here. <laughs> 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 but that, that, um, that, picture that we get of Jesus not satisfied that he rose from the dead, not satisfied that they're all saved, not satisfied that the sin question is over, not satisfied that they're following him uh, now in a new way, <laughs> breathing on them. You know, we say, and, and what did he say when he, he did that? Well, I think he said, receive ye the spirit, but the point being, the point being, that it's an impartation of what is God, not what is of God, but what is God. <clears throat> One of the reasons why we're doing this Philippians class is, and you should pray, you should pray for me, you should pray for us, <clears throat> is that our minds only comprehend what we already comprehend, but our spirit can receive something beyond that. I mean, it can. And it doesn't have to do it in here. It can, you can be driving home or walking or da 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 and go, and the Holy Spirit, you know, just go, ding, you go, oh, my God. You know, let's not make this another class. You know, how many of you have been in a class that you said, that was really good. I, you know, that class was great. And then you say, okay, write me a thesis on it. You go, why? I remember one sentence. Well, that, and I, I really have no problem with that. If the Holy Spirit breaks one sentence to you, that's all that really matters. But I'm just saying, wouldn't you like more than a sentence? Yes. <laughs> and I believe, I honestly believe that this, this thing that the Lord wants me to share in chapter 2 that we're preparing for, that it's not what we think it is. It's not just being nice for God's sake <laughs> it's not you know uh, it is Jesus in the way that he wants to manifest and that's only true because of the cross to have dealt with us so that he's, his, his hands are no longer nailed his feet are no longer nailed we're, as it were, nailed, Amen. you know, <clears throat> our hands and our feet so that he can do what he wants to do. <clears throat> and we join him with, in the cross. <clears throat> all right. So I don't, like I said, I don't want to make a big deal out of all that. But <clears throat> let's go back to Philippians. And... Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> that you may approve things that are excellent. So he says, I'm praying that your love may abound more and more so that you can prove, approve the things that are excellent, so that you will give your approval to what I am, believe is the most excellent stuff, <laughs> things. I know that was disjointed, but that's, you know, that you may approve. I pray, this is Paul talking, I am praying for you. What are you praying, brother? I'm praying for this love, this more excellent way to abound more and more in you, in your judgments and in your knowledge and in your approach so that you may approve you give your approval to, that you give the recognition due to it that I have because I believe with all my heart, I'm, ta I'm talking to Paul here, that this is not just something we do, it's a way. Yes, it is. And it's a more excellent way. And the other is a way. Do you understand? To go after gifts, to go after, it is a way. You don't believe that? Go visit a church. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
you'll see that it's a, it's a way. Did you have a comment? I would just say that, you know, I personally have visited a lot of churches, and yeah, I've seen they can take their point of view and, and slant it. Sure. And I, that's been a lot. But in, in here, I mean, don't you really think that he's wanting you to use love and love may above more past your knowledge and your judgment? And then he comes right here again and he hits you with it that you will see the things that are excellent and you'll be without offense that you won't be offended by someone else's behavior. You're right. just going to deal with God on your own plane. Or offending them with your or behavior. Or offending them with your behavior. Yeah. Correct. And, I, and <clears throat> see, I, I believe that this is the way to unity, but we, we won't see that until we get into the second chapter, how clearly Paul is making that declaration. Right now... It's there. You see it. So many of you see it. But what's the point of seeing it if there's a, if there's a whole way to it and we've never embraced the way of it, only, you know, the truth of it or, or, or it's just a subject among many subjects, you know. And we, we value it depending on could I say it? We, we may value it depending on our selfishness. Well, I know, but I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be nice. Yeah, it's pretty rare, so enjoy it. <laughs> but you're right. You're right. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, and he, he says that you may approve the things that are more, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Because, anybody remember this day of Christ thing? Verse 6, remember we discussed it? It's right there. It's the same concept. It's the same concept that we discussed when we were talking about verse 6. And that is that the day of Christ is not the same thing as the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is the judgment. The day of the Lord is the cross. Uh, if you really want to study it out, if you really want to study it out, find out where the New Testament uh, wording for that came from, get in the Old Testament, and you'll eventually arrive at the fact that the day of the Lord or the day was the day of atonement. But you see, we misread the day of atonement. It's the day my sins were washed away. I got news for you. More happened at the cross than your sins got washed away. You got washed away. <laughs> if you understand. <laughs> in, in a flood of blood. No, no, no. You, you died at Calvary. <laughs> Pretty good saying there, huh? <laughs> So this is that, this is uh, finding this more excellent way and arriving, if you will, at the day of Christ or the day of Jesus Christ where he's the light, he's the life of that day, he's the reality, the day dawn the day star has risen it has dawned and when that reality comes when till we all come and we haven't all yet come in that in the fullness of what it's talking about there it will be all coming to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ which is us being his body. And you read it. You read it in Ephesians. That's what it's talking about. And it'll start talking about the body and every member supplying instead of taking. And this reality of, of Christ actually embodying us. Christ actually, not, not by his miracles and stuff like that, because remember 1 Corinthians 13 says, you know, when this day comes, when this reality comes, you know, the, you know, it's like all of this reality that we're talking about, knowledge and all mysteries and, and prophecies and, and gifts and able to move mountains, he calls that a glass darkly. 
I mean, think about it. I mean, this is what the churches are touting. This is what it's about. And everybody's jumping. Yeah, this is, this is what it's about. Well, no, it's of God. It's a blessing. It's sweet, and it's, it's certainly good when you're a brand new Christian. But it's not what it's all about. This day is what it's all about. Till we all come not to salvation or to heaven, to the measure there's a measure by which you'll be measured of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And the fullness of Christ, folks, if you read it, it's, uh, it's the body. It's Christ in the body. I mean, that's what it is. The fullness is Christ in the body. And he says that over in Ephesians several, at least three different places where he talks about being filled full. But he's not talking about the Holy Ghost. Isn't that funny that it, I mean, so many things that we have embraced or said, or, or, or you know, and, and again, I'm not saying they're not important. They are important, but they are not the ultimate way that God wants us to come because you can, you can, uh, somebody said it last week, I think it was, you can operate gifts, you can cast out demons, you can do all that kind of stuff. And Jesus said, many, many, many shall come to me in that day. Many shall come to me in that day. Well, what is that going to be, a Wednesday? No, that day is when his body is formed. And he will say, I, they will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we da 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 da? And he'll say, I never knew you because he knows you as his body. He knows you as his bride. He knows you in oneness. He doesn't know you by uh, shadow ministries, glass darkly ministries. <laughs> and, and it sounds terrible to put it in that, that light, but that's the light Paul put it in. And he says, well, when this comes, that'll all pass away, and this is going to be what it's about. Well, I mean, wouldn't it be sad, wouldn't, wouldn't it be terrible to be one among many who arrive at that day but don't arrive with the wedding garment on? You know, the marriage outfit. Meaning what? That we're one. And saying, well, didn't we do this? Didn't we? And he's going, look, I don't even know you in, in this realm. I know you in another realm. I know you by another way. And that way has, we can say it in two different ways. That way has come because we are now, beloved, now we are the sons of God. But it doth not yet appear what we shall be in that, see, there's in Philippi, or, or at Philippi, and in Son. Do you see it? Remember, that's our, what was our verse one, or yeah, it's verse one. See, we got into all of that. The difference of being at Philippi, or in Christ Jesus, and walking at Philippi, meaning as part of the church, and because he called them saints at Philippi, as part of the church at Philippi, but not the church, the embodiment of Christ. Ha! Huh. I mean, that just, that, just, that just sends shivers through me. I mean, I don't want to be there. I don't want Jesus saying, well, I don't know you. No, you, oh, no. No, man, you know me. Don't you remember? I went on that short-term missions trip, you know, when I was like 16, and yeah, I know I'm 60 now, but I mean, it was fun. I never knew you. Oh, no, we went out and we prayed for people. Never knew you. You, you, you see what I'm saying? <clears throat> None of this is a condemnation of other churches. None of this, all of this is what Paul is saying. Okay? This isn't Randy. I didn't, I'm not making these things up I'm I'm telling you what the scriptures say you know when I was in uh, that kind of a church I loved it 
I love dancing around. I love the miracles, and I love seeing new people saved all the time, and I, I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it. But then God starts showing you, you know, there's a, there's a way. And that doesn't mean you can't be in those gatherings and walking in the more excellent way either. See, I, there's so many bases I can cover here. You know, in other words, and again, I'm not condemning anybody because there's, I believe, and this is my belief, I believe they're saved in every denomination, in every kind of church, including ones that you would say, well, they couldn't be. I think people actually meet God and maybe their relative or husband or wife or someone's going to a certain church and they are gathering that's, you know, and they have met the Lord. I believe that somebody can be in the darkest regions of the Amazon, God touched their heart, they, you know, and come to know the living God and begin to express this excellent way towards those that are around them. I mean, so I'm not limiting God on any of these fronts. But I am saying there's a reality that we all must come to. Not that there's a problem with other churches. The reality we must come to is there is a way, an excellent way. And God, by Paul, is talking to the ones that are dealing with the Glass Darkly ministries and trying to get them over to him. Do you, do you see that? Okay. Do you think I covered all the bases and I won't get in any trouble over any of this? Okay. <laughs> just checking. Just, just thought I'd check. <laughs> okay, we got to, golly, man, what do we got? Five minutes? You know, seven minutes? Um, uh, let's go to verse 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Two things in this scripture. One is... God wants you filled. Amen? God wants you filled. Yes, he does. You say, amen. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm not opposed to being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about that. The Bible even talks about people that are filled with the Holy Spirit getting refilled. Did you know that? God gives free refills. Well, you know, some places like Ireland, they don't. God does. <laughs> we need Jesus. <laughs> All right, being filled, being filled. Take it seriously. Take it. I mean, look at that and go, oh, my God, I want to be filled. He's, he's wanting me. But notice he didn't say be filled. He said being this is, I-N-G means an ongoing process, amen? Being filled with the fruits. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about some of those fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faith, long-suffering, uh, you know, the, and those, and that one, and that one over there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, all of those are not our fruits. They're God's. But we're supposed to be filled with them. And all of them are related to character and how you treat one another. Long-suffering. Well, that, you don't need that, you know. You know, that's usually for somebody else, you know. Because you, cause you ain't got no problems. <laughs> <laughs> but love is the first one and it goes on down well this is being absolutely clear he wants you being filled with this on an ongoing thing and he describes them not just as the fruits the fruits of righteousness yes but notice he uses fruits of righteousness so I don't think it's the fruit of righteousness meaning 
like the fruit of the Spirit. The, he doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit. He says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness. But here he's saying the fruits of righteousness. So I believe that that includes all of those things. I believe it is the result of right standing with God or being in the kind of relationship with God that he wants you to be in. But notice this. He says, which are by Jesus Christ. Yes. He is reaffirming verse 8 clearly when he said, I long after you in the bowels or the tender mercies of Jesus Christ, and he's reaffirming that whatever comes out of him, he's just a branch. Yes. Jesus is the vine. He's saying, you're all just branches of the vine, and you need to quit trying to produce stuff. Because a branch doesn't produce fruit, it bears it. Amen? It bears it. And it doesn't force it out, and it doesn't, it, it's, you know, I don't even know. I, I would think, this is just my musings. I would think that if a branch is considering what to do in his state, that he would concentrate the most effort on abiding in the vine because that's where the life connection is. And when that fills him, Fruit is actually an automatic, isn't it? It's not something he produces. So the whole thing is, I want your life. So I'm going to stay in union. Well, I don't feel good. Well, I messed up today. Well, somebody looked at me wrong. I must be yucky. Well, you know, can you see all that, that stink savor going up to God? You know, God's going, what? <laughs> Gabriel, go down there and slap him on the head. No, he wouldn't say that. He would say, Holy Spirit, teach him the truth, wouldn't he? That's what he'd say. That's what he'd say. <clears throat> because we so easily break with who we are by Christ in an attempt to become who we are by Christ. Do you understand? Because we go, well, and we think if we start putting ourselves down, I'm so yucky at that, we think somehow that's going to be the big breakthrough. It didn't broke through. You broke away. You know, like a slave, you broke away, man. You don't, you know, the breakthrough is when you stand up for the truth against all those condemning thoughts and all of those feelings that, I mean, once, you know, it's like the, the example I used to use a long time ago is it's like a door. The devil comes and knocks at the door, and you open the door, and he throws in a bag of snakes. They go everywhere. Then you spend the rest of the week hunting them down, and you're looking, oh, you know, oh, what this been, man, all this stuff. And when the devil you knocks, you go, who's there? He goes, it's the devil. Go, go away. I'm one with Jesus. You're not my boss anymore. You're not the boss of me. See, but instead, he says, you know, and I, I, you know, I've heard that for 40 years. Yeah. Kim was talking about their 16 years, and I said, next year in August, me and Deb will be married 40 years. Yeah, we got married when I was three. <laughs> anyway, you know. People say to me, well, the devil said so-and-so, <laughs> you know. And they want me to refute the devil and show and prove absolutely clearly that that's wrong. And in my mind, it's like if the devil comes to me, I don't go, Lord, show me something to refute the devil. I go, it's the devil. He's a liar. I don't talk to you. I don't listen to you. Yeah, but da 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 you're a liar. Jesus said you're the liar and the father of it. Anything you say is going to be a lie. You're a wonderful person. See, that's a lie. I'm one with Jesus. I'm not a wonderful person. <laughs> Stay in oneness. Abide. Be a branch that has the focus of, of drawing the life of Jesus out of the vine and drawing that life, that sap, into your branch and be filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Christ. All of this other stuff, folks, 
is, you know, an example I used to use when we were running out of time. But it's Christmas tree righteousness. We put all these bulbs on there and we go, oh, look, I'm a gorgeous tree. You're dead. You got no life in you. You are slowly wilting. You will be on the curb in a month for sure. You know? Oh, I'm gorgeous. You got nothing. I'm prettier than you. Look, I'm flashy. You know? God. God's not looking for Christmas tree righteousness. He's looking for apple tree righteousness. All right, let's wrap this up right real quick. Which are by Christ Jesus under the glory and praise of God. Notice... God's getting the glory here. In the last one, he was saying, the last verse, he was saying he wants you sincere and without offense, but now this has nothing to do with you. You're, you're allowing this reality of Christ to come out of you because you know the Father wants Jesus and is glorified by Jesus. Do you see it? That's what it's saying. Which are by Jesus Christ unto Anything that's by Jesus Christ is unto. If it's by, it's unto. If it's by Christ, it's unto who? The Father. Right? If something comes through you by Christ, the Father's glorified by the Son. And therefore, and in closing, and as we wrap, as we call it a wrap, the Father is not working hard on you except to, that it be Christ in you. He wants the Son. He doesn't want you. He wants the Son. You go, he doesn't want me. Well, he wants you one with Christ, but he don't want you, you know, because you were meant for crucifixion. You were meant to be crucified so that you could be a container of Christ so that the Father would be glorified. We think, we think, you know, like, okay, I'm going to shout in church and this is going to glorify God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. You know, somebody comes up to you after, where'd you get out of church? Sore throat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> If it's not coming by Christ, the, fa the Son glorifies the Father. I'm not saying you can't praise God. I praise God. Do you understand? I shout. I play the guitar. I sing. I write worship songs. I'm for it. I'm not against it. You see what I'm saying? But he wants what comes by Christ and not just Christian. That verse proves it, doesn't it? Could it say it any more plain? All right, we're going to close with that. Father, we just thank you for this time. And again, our hearts are open to you. And we hear the words of the teacher, but we want to hear the, the heart of the author of the book. We want to hear through the Holy Spirit, of the reality of Christ as you know him, Father, and as we're supposed to know him. Father, continue to stir us to hunger and to keep us unsettled enough to always want more of Jesus and to never be satisfied and never, uh, Lord, even when our compass is hit, never stay long in our confusion or never stay long in our self-condemnation. Never stay long in the world. Never stay long drawn in by the things of this life. We ask you, we ask you to do it. Lord, we know we're all in different places. But you know where, right where we're at. Bring us along, Holy Spirit. Bring us to Jesus and conform us to his image. We ask it in his name. Amen.